cats and dogs being eaten together, even some talk of policy. Who won, who <laughs> lost the American presidential debate? Hi, I'm Brian Lilly, political columnist with the Toronto Sun. With me, Warren Kinsella, a connoisseur of cat meat, here to talk about the political <laughs> debate last night. That's an inside joke, only a few will get, Warren. Uh, but before we get to uh, the debate, I, I want to play a clip from the 9-11 memorial service the morning after uh and we'll just roll it as you and i talk it's it's donald trump and kamala harris shaking hands and there you know joe biden's there michael bloomberg everyone's being civil uh and the only reason i'm playing that is that's the way it should be and we need more civility in politics and people always question how you and i can actually be friends um but you know, we should look at people we disagree with politically as opponents during the campaign, not as enemies because they're in a different party. I think it's, I, I agree with you. I mean, you know, in my day when dinosaurs ruled the earth and I worked for Kretzia, like, you know, like Kretzia would say to us, you take off your jersey and you all go have a beer together. And I had Tory friends and I had new Democratic friends and it was good. I even dated some con conservative women, no less. And um, that's how it should be. So maybe she brings out the best of him in that regard. You know, he, she went across the stage at the start to shake his hand because they'd never met. And that looked good. And, and he So to me, that, that, that was a power move. And that's exactly what I would have done because there were a lot of questions before it even started. Would they even shake hands? And you have to think that there'd be animosity on both sides. Like, I'm sure that she is not a big fan of everything Trump's been saying of her. He's not a big fan of hers. Uh, so somebody had to break the ice, and she made it very clear she was walking across the stage. Power move. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, I agree. And her optics were good. You know, when he started getting angry, and as soon as she, she baited him, everybody knows it. Like, it was, she baited, yeah. she set the bait. He took the bait and he was wiggling around on the, you know, the floor of her boat for most of the show. And I don't know why he did that because his team had said, we know what she's going to do. She's going to try and bait the guy. That's why they successfully lobbied to get the microphones muted, you know, so that it's only one speaker, but he took the bait anyway. And it just blew me away. And she, and then she just let him hang himself. So, you know, I, like going like on was, about dogs and cats, like the dogs and cats clip. Okay, let, play. Let, let's play that clip here. They have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in, they're eating the cats, they're eating. They're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. The people on television say my dog was taken and used for food. So maybe he said that. And maybe that's a good yeah. thing to say for a city manager. I'm not taking this from but television. But the people on I'm television the saying their dog was eaten by the people that went there. Again, the Springfield city manager says there's no evidence of that. Vice we'll President Harris, out. I'll let you respond to the rest of what you've heard. <laughs> You talk about extreme. <laughs> All right. So that that was one of the fact checks that ABC did. And they came out and said that didn't happen. Warren, I, I know you think that it's uh, ridiculous. It's being mocked on air. It's being talked about on CNN and ABC as if it's false. There's video of it. There's video of people talking about this, including police officers. That's what started all of this. So I, I, I'm not sure that clip is actually the win well, Brian, I, I, it, it does not belong in a political it does not belong in a presidential debate he sounded like a crazy person when he was saying that because you know and by the way the only campaign that's got somebody who eats dog on their side is him with bobby kennedy jr pretending to eat a dog like it's stupid it's ridiculous it's dumb okay and but why, why is it ridiculous if it is a policy of the biden harris administration that has resulted in this. Why is it wrong to bring that up in a presidential debate and say, look at what's happening in uh, in Ohio, in this town of 60,000 that's had 20,000 people added to it due to your policy? Because they're laughing at him, that's why. Because they're, they're laughing, laughing at him at because they're, they're claiming no, something that's true question. isn't true. Let me, let me answer your question. 
The answer to your question is they're laughing at him this morning. It became the subject of stand-up comics on late night TV last night because he looked like an idiot. It's ridiculous. I don't care if it's happening or not. That's not when you're seeking the highest office on earth, what you should be talking about. What you should be talking about is your strength. And in his case, it was the economy. But he didn't do that. He talked about crazy things. He talked about aborting babies after they're born, which, you know, kind of you can't do. He um, talked about the dogs I, again, the again, that hold on that. That's another one that ABC fact checked him on and said that doesn't happen. And yet there are clips of Governor Northup, former Governor Northup from Virginia, defending the very policy that Trump described. So, you know, it, it, let's talk about the the fact that Trump was, look, he lost the debate and he lost the debate because he chased squirrels. His opening was solid, I thought. He answered the first question. The first question was, you know, the classic, are you better off today than you were four years ago? Harris didn't answer. She talked around it. I mean, she gave a response, but she didn't answer the question. Trump answered that question. I thought at the beginning he was solid. Then he started chasing squirrels, and 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 then his closing was strong. She wa performed better than expected, which is a mistake of the Republicans lowering expectations on her. But let's talk about the the three on one nature of that debate. The moderators were not neutral parties. Uh, they were fact checking him, but not fact checking her. She made statements that were outright lies. Never once did they try and correct it. That's why you've got Republicans in the states, conservatives in this country saying the media's biased because they put their thumb on the scale. And this was a great example of it. Wrong again. Sorry. I'm going to have to disagree with you. Uh, Who was the uh, on candidate? What? Let, me, let, me, let me answer. Who was the candidate last night who was given the most minutes to speak? Donald uh, Trump. He, he got Not three Kamala minutes Harris. more. And who was the candidate who repeatedly got his microphone opened up so he could respond out of turn, Donald Trump. In fact, I think, and you know, them asking her about fracking, them asking her right off the top about, are you better off than four years ago? They did not throw softballs at her. The bottom line is, and this is what losers always do. They complain about the ref. You lose no, no, the game, I'm not complaining complain about, about the ref. The you can't, it, it, Trump lost because he lost. But the refs were not refs. They were active players. Well, they gave more minutes for Donald Trump to make his case, and he didn't. The only case he made was to hang himself. He took out the rope, he ne ne neatly folded it, and he hanged himself. So that's not the moderator's fault. That's the fault of Donald Trump. And by the way, that's not the, front, the fault of the Republican team who tried mightily, I think they're all saints, trying to get this guy ready for the debate. They knew what they had to do. They told him what he had to do. We all saw the stories coming out about debate prep. He refused to do traditional de debate prep. The Democrats did. And he got his ass kicked as a result. And the polling is going to show that. Like she had the best fundraising it, night in the history of U.S. politics last night because of her debate performance. And perhaps a woman named Taylor Swift. So and Taylor you and Swift, I have talked... You and I have yeah. talked on uh, on your podcast, on the Kinsella cast. Listen, if you're not already uh, subscribing, but you and I have discussed how I believe um, Trump adding people to his campaign like Tulsi Gabbard, RFK Jr., people who have uh, devoted followings has moved the needle back in favor of Trump to the point where going into the debate last night, 270towin.com, had Harris ahead on the average of polls by 0.8%. Real clear politics average was Harris ahead by 1.1%. That, you know, she moved ahead a few weeks ago. He's tied it up. Does this debate change things? Does Taylor Swift change things? Uh, I, I would argue the debate's probably a wash and Taylor Swift might have more of an impact because, uh, People that watch that whole debate are probably going to be the partisans, not the undecideds. Taylor Swift moves undecideds. I agree with you. Popular culture in politics, you know, in, in politics, when I've advised politicians, you're always trying to get some popular culture icon 
to come on your side. And the Democrats had been working for weeks to get this endorsement. I remember when I was advising McGinty way back when, we knew we had won the campaign in 2003 when we got the young guy, you know, the waiter from Kingston on the, you know, the award show, the singing show, he endorsed Alt McGinty. That's when we knew that we had won. And like, you know, I think, as I pointed out on our discussion, that I think she won the debate hands down. But what really made the difference was getting that endorsement from Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is not just the biggest celebrity in the world. She is the best known person in the world. Sorry, Pope. Sorry, President Biden. Like she is as big as it gets. And it is going to move votes, particularly among young women, you know, Harris, Childless cat, to, she signed her endorsement, childless cat lady. Holding a cat up. We should show the picture. She looks pretty good holding up her cat. And like, you know, you're quite right. I think, you know, Harris did not get much of a bounce at all out of her convention, to my great surprise, because, you know, a lot of people thought the convention went quite well. And the, the, the margin between the two candidates really had shrunk to the point where it was non-existent. I think this Taylor Swift endorsement in places like Wisconsin, Miss, you know, Michigan, Pennsylvania, those places where you know it's really, really tight and matters. I think that Taylor Swift is is uh, very, very helpful to Kamala Harris. Well, we'll know uh, whether that is a a good analysis or not. Say by Sunday, Monday next week, maybe folks can listen in on the Kinsella cast. I'm sure you and I will be discussing the latest polls because. When I talk to pollsters, that they say it takes about that amount of time for anything to move the needle. So, you know, we'll see by the weekend. Warren, great talking to you as always. We'll ask the audience for their thoughts. Drop a comment down below. Share this on social media. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.